surrender the outcome of understanding and trust without understanding and trust surrender is not possible this is the austerity of a devout heart then you need not do anything you need not search the scriptures or any technique or proof or philosophy or logic in a flash all these things drop from your being when surrender like this happens only then you can say let thy will prevail nanak is not a philosopher he is not writing any scripture he is simply expressing his inner feelings he is saying that all that he has experienced but your ego will create problems the whole understanding of ego is that you are right and whatever you say should happen the way you see it there are many russian writers leo tolstoy has written a beautiful story russian writers like leo tolstoy maxim gorky and dostoevsky all have written beautiful stories each is full of awareness one such a story is a woman had died god of death sent his messengers to go and go to the earth and bring back the soul of the dying woman when the messenger came on the earth he was in quandary the woman had three young children three young daughters two of them were newly born twin the younger one was unaware that the mother is no more alive was still suckling the mother next one was crying and fell asleep calling the mother tears that has trickled down her cheeks in the process have now dried in the absence of love the husband had already died no one is there to take care of these three young ones these children were not yet been named the messenger felt sad he returned empty handed on reaching back he narrated the entire story to the god of death and therefore asked for his forgiveness because of the situation that was so delicate that he could not do the job can it not be possible that some time be given to the woman until the young girls grow old before the soul of the woman is brought until now the god of death was listening to all laments and emotions of the messenger silently now it was the turn of the god to speak he said you have become wise now you consider your will to be wiser than that of the one who gives life and death you have disobeyed and as a result you will have to go to earth and live there until you can laugh at your ignorance three times only then you can return try to understand this ego always always laughs at the folly of others and when you can laugh at your own ignorance and folly only then the cycle of ego begins to lose its control the messenger agreed to go to earth for punishment however he could not understand the logic of laughing three times now that he was the messenger from heavens need to enter the earth in the usual manner of birth was not there he just wished and he was on earth on a cold wintry day 
he appeared naked by the side of the road. He was picked up by a cobbler who according to his wife was a useless man and for that matter every woman considers her husband to be useless. He never paid attention in work. He always spent time and money in bad company. Winter was approaching. The wife had some somehow saved money to get winter clothes for the family. The cobbler was on the way to purchase winter clothes for the family. It was then he saw a naked man lying by the roadside helpless. The compassion of the poor cobbler flowed towards the messenger. Out of compassion he brought he bought clothes for this man instead of buying clothes for the family. Not only had this he brought the messenger along with him to the house. The cobbler was a man of meager resources. On the way he told the messenger not to worry if his wife gets angry or say, says something. Things will settle soon. The cobbler returned home with the messenger. His wife was really mad at him. Neither the cobbler nor the wife knew that the stranger who came to their home was a messenger from heavens. The messenger knew his capabilities, however, neither of the two knew this. At this, the messenger laughed. The wife could not see beyond humanness. She was seeing that she had lost. She could not see what she will gain by the presence of this man. She could not see that now doors of happiness are opening for her. When the cobbler wanted to know the cause of his laughter, the messenger refused to say anything until he laughs three times. Within a few days, he learned the trade of the cobbler. The fame started spreading far and wide. Within six months, the cobbler became quite rich. Rich and elite started coming for shoes now. It so happened that one day, emperor came to get his shoes made. The leather was very expensive. He cautioned that he wanted shoes instead of slippers. Traditionally in Russia, people use slippers only when they die. Even the cobbler cautioned the messenger not to make slippers. This may create problems for them. Yet still the messenger made the slippers. This angered the cobbler so he picked up the stick to beat the messenger as the cobbler feared severe punishment. Same time, someone came running from the palace and said not to make the shoes, he instead make slippers. The emperor had died. The future remains unknown to human beings. Except God, no one knows the future. Man takes all decisions on the basis of the past. Shoes were needed when emperor was alive and that now he is dead. Slippers are needed instead. At this the cobbler asks for the forgiveness of, for his behavior. At this the messenger laughed a second time. And when the cobbler inquired the reason, this man refused any explanation as this was the second laughter. Also the messenger brought, messenger thought that unnecessarily he was worried about the future of the innocent girls and unnecessarily he came in between. Now the third event happened. 
one day a woman brought three grown up daughters and wanted to get their shoes made as they were getting married the divine messenger recognized the three girls and it was because of these girls that he is undergoing this punishment these girls seem quite happy at this the old lady narrated that these girls belonged to her neighbor who died in poverty and she had no children as a result she had brought them up now the time for their marriage has come had the mother was alive these children would not have this upbringing now these three girls are getting married in the family of the emperor hearing this the messenger laughed a third time now was the time for him to explain the cause of his laughter and also he had to leave the earth the messenger said the mistake was mine the destiny is very wise vast and incomprehensible by humanness that which you cannot see is vast and remains unknown this you cannot even imagine first time i laughed at the ignorance of your wife who could not see my divine nature and therefore was angry second time i laughed at your ignorance you had compassion trust was lacking in my understanding and insights and this time i laughed at my own ignorance that i could not understand the divine plan and tried to impose my will on that of god as a result of lack of trust i had to come to the earth and undergo this punishment this story is very simple only russians could do that but it narrates an important message this is the way of nanak he is saying do not bring your understanding in between and if you have understood the secret then you do not have to worry about so many paths leave everything to him overflowing with gratitude do all that you are to do be thankful for all that you were asked to do yesterday today and will be asked to do in future just go on sending blank checks of gratitude your laments or thanks will not affect the divine function and nanak says this is the only path he is eternal He is formless i am like an ephemeral wave and you are like a vast ocean you are sharing with thousand hands a thousand times i offer my life my living that which appeals to you is my understanding nanak laments there are infinite ignorant ones and blind also there are infinite who deliberately impose their views many are ready to kill and many are sinners many go on lying and continue to their life of falsehood nana continues to lament the saga of life no no one hand there is on one hand there is congregation of wise who have devised methods for transformation of their own efforts and on the other there are infinite dishonest thief and sinners there are two ways of going astray 
If you move towards falsehood, you are astray. And if you start thinking about truth, once again, you will be led astray. Nanak does not care about any of these paths. Instead, he says neither he cares for what holy man says, nor what the sinner says. None of these interest me. Nanak has left everything in the hands of God. Whatsoever he does or chooses as the way for me is acceptable to me. His will is my pleasure. Such is the understanding of man of heart. Try to understand this. If there remains a possibility of attaining your goal, then you will not be able to resign everything to God. Then your focus will be on whether you are getting to your goals or not. If you are thinking of goal, then you cannot really leave everything to God. Now it is not important if you attain to your destination or not. Now destination is no more a destination. For a devotee, surrender is the only end. Beyond surrender there is nothing. If he drowns you, that is acceptable. Question is not where you go or what you get. Question is of your inner state of awareness and all circumstances. Nanak's whole understanding is of surrender. In this Sutra, Nanak explains the diversity of God's creation. Nanak also touches upon the law of karma, the principle of cause and effect. This is more categorical and evident. Assuming himself to be the lowliest of the lowly, as if talking to himself or his disciples, he pleads to ponder on this. Yes, the world is full of good and bad. It is only by becoming aware of karmic laws that we can give direction to our lives. Only tra then transformation can be possible. Nanak extols the energy field of the world and the concept of name and form. This is in conformity with biblical saying, first it was the world and then it became God. As also the Vedic concept of primordial sound that existed before creation came into existence. If there is a form, then it exists only with a name. Similarly, if there is a word, it must manifest itself into form. This is pure science. Man cannot think without words. Man cannot even be silent without words. And every word that we comprehend, write, or speak associates with a form. This can be easily tested by simply uttering words at random. One will see that each word as it is spoken, an image springs from within our memory and consciousness. And when the name and form do not coexist, then we find ourselves confused and lost. So as soon as you utter a word, immediately an image flashes from your memory. You say chair, immediately an image flashes. And these two 
go in harmony with one another. The import of the word is also emphasized from the point of view of our speech and writing. In fact, Nanak has laid so much emphasis on the spoken word that he has taken this issue in Japji Sahib, that is his message, several times. Nanak says there are infinite names, infinite places, abodes and, and realms. Even to say infinite is unnecessary. All names arise out of words. So too everything evolves out of word. Word gives rise to everything. All that is written or spoken evolves out of word. With moving finger, word comes into existence. And once something is written, it moves on. Thus comes the concept of fate. However, one who writes remains beyond everything. Whatever he wills happens. Entire creation reflects his name. How can one describe the entire creation? One can sacrifice his being again and again, whatsoever appeals him really matters. Hindus have discovered thousand names of God. This is symbolic. Muslims speak of 99 names of Allah. All names are His. When entire creation reflects His attributes, then all names are naturally his. If you try to take account of his names, then each explains one of his attributes. When we say karuna, karuna means compassion. When we say daya, another name, this is piety. When we say archana, these are the feminine names. Archana means constant, in constant prayer. When we say Majid, Islamic name, it means greed, so on and so forth. If you try to take account of his names, then each explains one of his attributes. You can go on giving different names, yet still no name can encompass his magnanimity. It is man who gives names. Therefore, whatever name you get, you give will definitely work. Nanak says how one can call him, which name one can really use. Nanak says, neither all names, either all names are his or no name reflects him. This is important to understand the word. We can call alphabet as letters. Akshar really means that which cannot be destroyed. Char means to destroy a means that which cannot be destroyed. All letters of the alphabet can be destroyed. You write a letter on a slate, this can be wiped out. Once it was not there, then it came into existence and again it is no more. We call alphabet as letters or aksha. There is a reason behind it, that which cannot be written or destroyed, that which you write is merely the reflection. Bhagavad Gita devotes a complete chapter on Char and Akshar, that is, try to understand this with an example. There is moon and infinite stars in the sky. 
their reflection is in the lake. You shake the water of the lake and reflection of the moon gets scattered. This is cha, means that which can be destroyed. However, you cannot scatter the real moon in the sky. This is indestructible. Or what is called as word or later in the language or letter in the language. When Christians speak of speak that it was, there was word in the beginning, they are mentioning to that which is eternal and cannot change. Your language is a mere reflection. All that is written is the reflection of the real, just like the reflection of moon in the lake, and reflection can be destroyed. And from where this reflection is coming cannot be destroyed. The source of reflection cannot be destroyed. Whatever you are speaking is destructible. And that which is speaking deep within, I am speaking. The words are forming. But who is speaking through me is eternal and cannot be destroyed. My words can change, but Bible calls as word. However, not much explanation is given of the word, except indestructible akshar. Everything is the invention of man. What is this indestructible that does not destroy? Accept Akshar means that which cannot be destroyed and the rest is creation of man. What is this that which cannot be destroyed? Akshar, indestructible, eternal. Nanak says the closest reflection of Akshar is the existential sound. So Nanak's entire message revolves around Ekonkar Sapna. That which is existing is eternal, cannot be destroyed, and it is the only truth. If you understand these three words, you have understood the entire message of Nana. Whether you call this Japji or any other name, it's seen. Then you can understand the message. Omkar is the existential sound that cannot be destroyed. This is the only sound that continues to echo even without being written. This can never be destroyed till eternity lasts. It is the music of the existence, it is the echo or the whisper of the existence. Even when everything is destroyed, this remains. Bible says the first word was logos. What is this? This is the existential sound. This was the first word. Out of this evolved the entire existence. At the end or dissolution, everything will dissolve in it. In India, there are processes. They are known as Shabda Yog. Shabda means word. Accordingly, entire sadhana centers around the word. Word or Shabd implies to enter the wordless or silence or that which is beyond word. And when all words disappear and an echo or the whisper remains, this is the message of God. Nanak says, infinite are his names, forms and places. And what is the sense in saying infinite? 
Saying infinite is increasing the weight of the mind. Saying will not help. Doing will certainly matter. This is like someone who is standing on the seashore and says the depth of the ocean is immeasurable. This implies two things. First, he has not made any effort to know the depth. He is just standing on the shore and says that the depth is immeasurable. And if he is standing on the seashore and has not made any effort to know the depth, then his word is meaningless. In that case, you can ask this person, have you made any effort to know the depth? Also, what is meant by the word immeasurable? Very deep. Cannot be described as immeasurable. Immeasurable means something whose depth cannot be assessed. So if the person standing on the shore uses this word very deep, one thing can be said that he is using the word wrongly. There can be another possible. The person can say that he went inside but could not get the depth. This is not true either. He could not get the depth because he reached only halfway. Had he reached to the very end, certainly he would have discovered the depth. What can be said of God is immeasurable. This you can say only if you have really known God. In that case, even saying anything will be meaningless. Even saying anything will be meaningless.